Hi, my name is Beth Kugel. I'm known as Mrs. Kugel and I have a kindergarten learning safari. I'd like to show you how I'm teaching the 26 letters in 26 days to my little kindergarten students during this time of social distancing while at brick and mortar. It's been definitely a challenge. Normally, I group my children into three groups and I have different places where they rotate throughout the day. Normally, my room has five stations that look something like this. The children are assigned to one station each day. Well, we couldn't do that this year, so I had to get a little creative. This is how my classroom looks this year. My stations are put away, my tables are put away, my students have desks. You can see around my carpet, there are six desks. That is where I will move students to do small groups or to work with struggling students. I moved my kidney table outside the classroom this year. I also made little privacy dividers using Dollar Tree science boards and plastic sheet protectors. Here's an example of how my students are sitting and using the materials. Let's take a little bit closer look at how my classroom structure. When my children come in each day, they will find six picture cards. The picture cards go with the letter of the day. For 26 days, we will focus on one letter a day. They will also have a cute little puppet that's going to go with the pictures. When our instruction begins, we get out our plastic sheets. In these plastic page protectors, the students have two learning mats. This is the Papa Bear, Baby Bear, and Listening Ears board. I have bagged up letters for each of the children. Our school will focus on five letters for five days. During those, we'll focus specifically on one letter, but we'll touch on all five letters all five days. First, the students get out the capital letters and give them to Papa Bear. Baby Bear gets the lowercase letters. Sometimes we do them one at a time. I tell them to find a, capital, a specific capital letter. Sometimes I tell them to just unclip their letters and sort them. This has worked great. Although it took a lot of prep time to cut out all the cards, it was super simple once I had it done. I gave each child a snack bag with their name. They have five sets of capital and lowercase letters and five sets of pictures. Each day, they'll have different pictures that go with each letter. Let's take a look at it using a little bit different method. Here you see what the board looks like. Here are some different letters. First, the children get out their capital letters. I might say, can you find the letter R? It makes the R sound. Give Papa Bear the capital R. Or I might just tell them to sort. It really depends on which day. The first day we're going to be a lot more specific. By the end of the five days, hopefully they're able to find the capital letters independently. Next, it's time to match up lowercase letters. Again, the children have each received their own disposable materials instead of using laminated sets at my table. This is where a lot of times I will pause. I'll pause and switch to a YouTube video. I might Google or do a YouTube search for letter D song. I love Have Fun Teach and Jack Cartman, ABC Mouse. They all have great letter songs. After playing the video, then we'll look for our picture that begins with the letter D. My materials are in both color and black and white. Since I made individual materials for the children this year, I gave them each just black and white. We proceed through this with all the letters. When we are done, all the letters come off the board. We flip our plastic protectors over and they have a different type of sorting mat. This time we'll only use our lowercase letters. We'll be sliding those letters down next to Mama Bear to read words. So let's take a look at what that might be. I might say our vowel this week is letter I. It makes the is sound. 
can you move the it to the yellow paw? Then I might say, we're going to do some rhyming words. We're going to make the it family. We hear a t at the end of it. Can you find the t and put it on the red paw? Next, let's make our first rhyming word for it. Can you find the f? What letter makes the f sound? Can you move it to the green paw? Next, we would read it both the bumpy and stretchy way. Another way you could use these maps is shown here. I had the children slide one picture card next to Mama Bear, and then we wrote the capital in the lowercase letters. Here is a sample of Peter showing another way you could use the boards. You could use dry erase markers. Again, you could play a YouTube video. You could sing, I love the little letter factory song. The M says, mm. The M says, mm. Every letter makes a sound. The M says, mm. So we would write each of the letters. You could choose whether you just wanted to write lowercase or capital. When you're done writing all the letters, next it's time to spell a word. Write the s over the green paw. Write an a over the yellow paw. Write a m over the red paw. Put your markers down, reading fingers ready, touch and say each sound, then stretch it out. Let's change the ending sound. This time we're going to write a k. All right, bumpy way. S a k sack. Sometimes I get really exaggerated and I'll say, let's do it the stretchy way. The key is making it super fun. When I see the kids getting antsy, I just stop and play a YouTube video. If you're not allowed to sing, that's okay. We can still dance and listen to the songs. I try and do about five words each day, sounding the words out. This is gonna really prepare the kids for reading in our next stage of literacy development. Sometimes children have trouble writing the letters. So what I do is the children have black markers and then I'll use a colored marker, for example, green. If the child is struggling writing the letter M, I'll write it with green and then when they trace it over with black, mine goes away. They love to make mine go away. So this is a great technique for the children who are having trouble. When we get done with our five words, it's time to read a book. Each book has certain sight words. The first sight word we focused on was mine because it's going to be in all the books. There Again, I go to YouTube and I'll search for my sight word song or the sight word song. And each day we'll focus on a new sight word or review an old one. I want the children to practice pointing and tracking print. Again, this is going to help when we're finished with our 26 letters. If they've learned to blend some sounds and they've learned to tra track print, we're going to be able to move into word families and have successful readers very quickly. Our lesson is done at this point, and I'm going to introduce their independent seat work. Each book has a companion cut up sentence. Here you see the book. In the book, the B book was a best for me. The sheet is going to have a one of the sentences from the book. The children will practice writing the B. They'll practice cutting and pasting the words and reading. There's also a hat that goes with each puppet. So Baby Bear has a birthday hat. Again, the children can trace the letters. I allow, whenever they see dotted letters, they're allowed to use a marker. If there's no dotted letters, they have to switch to pencil. It takes a lot of training. In my class, markers are just for tracing dotted letters. If we're writing, we use a pencil. If we're coloring, we use a crayon. Again, the pictures go with the ones that are in the book and the ones they colored previously with the puppet. While the children are doing these activities, I can pull children over to work with them independently if they are struggling. 
Here's a sample of what a hat might look like. I also try and do a lot of fun things. For example, on the raccoon day, we might be raccoons and eat fish. When the children are done with their materials, pay for them. Their homework each night is to take their puppet home. I have them store their six picture cards in the bag. I've made YouTube videos to go with the puppets. I'm not a great singer or a musician. I made a tune to Old MacDonald Had a Farm, and if you want to check those out, you're welcome to. Just type in the name of the puppet and then Google it after it to find them. The children will practice reading every night with their parents. So they have a scavenger hunt for the pictures and then reading a book and their parents sign that the book is done. The children and the parents really enjoy this. Here is a sample of what my daily schedule looks like. When the children arrive, I am greeting them. Our children are wearing masks or face coverings, and so I'm attaching lanyards. They're not eating breakfast in the cafeteria. They're eating it in the classroom. I'm collecting homework, so it's a very busy time. The children can very easily color a puppet and color their six ones. So their puppets and their six pictures are at their seat for them to do. After I've taken attendance, the tardy bells rung, we've said the pledge, then we're ready for alphabet instruction. We usually begin with a Jack Cartman exercise song to get their blood flowing. And then I go to my puppet song that goes with their puppet. When we're done with that, they put their six pictures inside their puppet and get out their sorting mats. While they're getting their sorting mats out and dry erase materials, I'm walking around handing them their capital and lowercase letter and picture cards for the day. To match the capital and lowercase letters, we need a little brain break. So I love Dr. Jean's Who Let the Letters Out song. There's several different versions on YouTube. Next, we match up the picture cards. Sometimes I stop and play a letter song while we're matching up the pictures. Next, we do a sight word song, pass out the books, and practice tracing print. I love the alphabet lane, sing, spell, read, and write song. As a matter of fact, I've got their name tags at their desk, and I put pictures that go with that song on their name tags that are taped to their desk, and so they point and sing along with that. When that's done, all our materials are put away, and I read a story. Usually, it goes with our um, with whatever our puppet puppet character was. So on Baby Bear Day, we read Brown Bear, Brown Bear. We revisited it on M Day as we sorted M and M's. We revisited it again on S Day as we sorted Skittles. From ten to ten forty-five is independent practice snack and triple I small groups. So the children will make their hats and do their cut up sentences from the books. They can go back in color. I also made Play-Doh mats and I'll show you what those look like in just a second. Each child has a tub. We couldn't do regular toy time or steam activities. So I took all of my materials and I got tubs and I just assigned each child certain toys. I tried to make them a theme. This one has a fishing shark theme. There's Legos and there's a boat Lego in there. There's a math activity with little mermaids and narwhals and there are lots of books about the ocean. During this time the children can only get out their books or their learning activity that's in the Ziploc bag. They cannot get out the toys at this time. That will be in the afternoon. This is what it looked like. I won't lie, this has been a lot of work. The ones on the floor are ones that I normally have. I normally have those above and they're just for early finishers. There's usually not toys in them. There is some type of a manipulative, a steam type manipulative that goes with the books and the learning activities are normally at my stations. So the ones on the floor are my normal ones that have books and some sort of thematic steam activity that goes with it. This year I added toys. I also made a second set. The rule has been at our school that materials need to rest for four days before transitioning to another child. So 
the set that is above the cubbies will be the ones that are used this week. The ones on the floor will be stored behind a curtain. Then on Friday, I switch them out. Each week, I move them down one. So if the child had learning bucket one this week, they'll have set B learning bucket one the following week. Then they'll switch to bucket two and so on. These buckets should last me for the whole year. So although they were a lot of work and some expense to set up, they've given me some great extension activities for the entire school year. Inside their cubby, cubbies are smaller colored buckets. Those have a snuggle buddy that they can get out and read to, dry erase markers, I store their scissors and their reg regular magic markers. They also have a little chalkboard if you've ever done handwriting without tears, um, I've never actually had the program, but I do some of the activities. You can uh, use a little sponge and you can do wet letters, you can do chalk letters, you can erase the chalk letters. Lots of fun activities with those. I also have individual bagged math man manipulatives such as pattern blocks, connecting cubes, two-sided counters. They also have a lanyard to attach to their mask. So lots of different things that are personalized and stay with them do not change each week. Those are assigned to each child. Underneath the buckets, there's a clipboard, a dry erase board, and a Play-Doh mat. This is what the Play-Doh mats look like. I gave each child a um, little container of Play-Doh. I love Teacher Pay Teacher and I make stuff for it, but I also make lots of purchases. This is a nursery rhyme puppet that I purchased from someone and then I also, um, this numeral um, Play-Doh mat was in another Teacher Pay Teacher um, file that I purchased. And I loved it so much, I've made similar ones that go with our five letters. So. The first five letters we do are B, S, M, C, and A. So I made my own Play-Doh mats and I put the capitals on one side and the lowercase on the other. And I plan on doing this for each set of five letters. After that time, um, just to give you an idea of what the rest of my day looks like, we do have a special area break and then we use Envision Math. I, doing calendar activities. We get the dry erase boards out during that time. Again, I do some counting and movement YouTube videos every day. And then Envision Math has great um, digital resources. And so I used them last spring during distance learning. I could assign the activities to my children. Um, I won't lie, a lot of my children didn't do them. They didn't have devices at home, but it, that option is there and I'm utilizing those a lot more this year. Um, they've got an Another Look video and an Interactive Student Edition. They've got a visual learning video, so I'm using those a lot this year. If they've got a game that goes with that lesson, then we may do a whole group. We get um, laptops for our children one day a week where I have um, a device for every child and so as they learn how to log in and use the computers, I'm hoping maybe on our digital days we can go back and do some of these fun math activities. Um, I think that would be really fun. After lunch, we have a 20 minute recess. And then when we come back from recess, um, I either do a lesson or we get out our activity buckets. So here the children are with our activity buckets, and you can see, um, at first I thought it wouldn't be very fun to just play with toys by yourself, but they really do love it. They get so excited when it's toy time. For recess, I try and do lots of fun things. We're not allowed to use our playground equipment, so we began with a two-week unit on nursery rhymes, and so at Easter every year I always get lots of fun Easter eggs, so we got out our little math bag with the connecting cubes. They each had one in their cubbies, and so I just added an egg to it, and they tried to, the challenge was to try and build Humpty Dumpty a wall that he wouldn't um, fall off of. And so we just try and do a lot of fun things. Um, I try and find things that go with whatever we're studying. So on letter B day, 
I went to the party favor section and I got them each a little tiny one inch baby and a little tiny one inch bottle and a couple sheets of blue felt and I cut up little blue felt squares and so they got a cup of water with some soap bubbles, a baby, a bottle, and a blue blanket and we social distanced while we bathed our babies and fed them bottles. It was about a hundred degrees that day or at least it felt like it down here in Florida and so that was really fun to get to play in the water. I'm always looking at Dollar Tree and just trying to find fun fun things to do. On um, letter C day, I love the engaging reader, readers um, units and I use them a lot. And so we had done Chicka Chicka Boom Boom the week before. And so on letter C day, I bought a coconut and she they've got a great, um, to go with their engaging readers, they have a steam and math unit. And so they had a challenge about predicting whether a coconut would sink or float and we did that and then we ate coconut cookies so just trying to really make it fun and engaging um, on a day we'll do something with apples and then we'll glue apple jacks onto a for s day um, we sorted skittles and i found at the dollar tree it was like an eight pack of little finger skateboards so they each got a skateboard i found um like Halloween scary fingers and I'm going to give those to them on F day and then that will be their special finger that they point and read their books. So that it makes it really fun. The kids get excited about what's going to be their super surprise for the day. Learning definitely looks different this year. I look different this year but it's been fun and I hope you're enjoying your year. If you'd like my 26 letters and 26 days activities, you can find it on Teacher Pay Teacher. You can also check out my um, YouTube. Um, I do have a blog and I have a, I'm not always real good at keeping up with it. I've been really focusing on making some YouTube videos this year and um, just making learning so fun for our children. Have a great year and I'd love to hear back from you about the fun things you're doing in your classroom.